how many of you in this room are single? Okay, there's, there's, there's quite a few, I see, excellent. Uh, how many of you, more importantly, have ever been single at any point in time in your adult life? Okay, I see there are still quite a few people who haven't put their hands up. There are those kind who've always been in some relationship or the other. I, I know that kind. This story is not for you. For those who've ever been single at any point in time in your life, how many of you have aunts? And those who didn't raise their hands, you won't know the connection, but there is. I only discovered this strange relationship between aunts and their eligible nephews and nieces. When I turned 25, I had just moved for work to uh, Chicago. And one of my aunts, on discovering that I had moved there, opened one of her black books and found that there was a boy who was a potential match for one of her nieces who lived in the suburbs of Illinois. Uh, she checked this after I moved to Chicago. And so, since I was the only one who lived close by, could I be so sweet and meet the boy's mother and uh, check her out? Now, I wasn't sure what I'm supposed to check out. Uh, but when something is pitched as family duty, you do it. And, and besides, what did I have to lose? So, one Saturday morning, I met this boy's mother at the cafe of the local Borders bookstore. It was a bright winter morning and although it was cold outside, it was nice and warm once we got inside. Uh, there was the comfort of having many people at tables around us. I don't know what I was nervous about, but there was some comfort <laughs> in knowing that there were people around us. And this lady I was meeting, she was, uh, she was much younger than I thought. She was uh, very, very soft-spoken and she had a certain calmness about her that made it actually very easy to talk to her. And I found it very easy, therefore, to get into conversation with her. Of course, it's always easier when you're talking about other people than yourself. But she was polite enough to inquire about me also, and by which point I had opened up and found it easy to talk to her. Until at some point, she suddenly turned her head ever so slightly, smiled and said, so you're unmarried also. <laughs> I have a daughter as well. <laughs> I, I began mumbling that, you know, I, I hadn't come for this. I, I, I was too young. I just started working. But she reached into her bag and pulled something out and said, I have a picture. <laughs> and she placed the photograph on the table and she slid it across and left it beside me. <laughs> have a look at this. I was, of course, looking everywhere else at the people on the you know next the, ne the tables around us she was not awkward about this at all she sat there very patiently you know the fact that we were in a bookstore people at different tables she just placed that photograph left it in front of me very patiently waiting and so i realized at some point i would have to come up with some kind of response it's just that i wasn't sure what the appropriate response in this circumstance is I mean, is it worse to, you know, feign indifference towards the photograph as if it didn't, did, no, did nothing for me? Or go the other way and say, whoa, she's hot! <laughs> and so I, I picked what I thought was the middle part. So I, I said, uh, nice. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, nice. And but somehow I got out of that meeting and when I went back and I called my aunt and I said, you'll never believe what happened. She said, oh, yeah, yeah, she did mention she has a daughter and she asked about you. <laughs> I said, you knew. Why, why didn't you tell me before? And she said, Vita, if I told you, you wouldn't have gone. Nah. <laughs> Aunts, I realized, could simply not be trusted. They were not on your side. You know, I imagine, you agree, right? Yeah. Someone said it, someone said it, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there were, I, I imagine a secret society of aunts, you know, with, with ledger books full of names of unmarried nie nieces and nephews, trading them with each other when they met. We were a resource. We were just a currency that enhanced the value of that ledger book. And aunts were very quick on the draw. You have to be very careful. This one time I was visiting Bombay. Uh, it was a last minute trip. No one knew I was coming. But when my Taiji found out I was here, I got a call immediately. Beta Bombay mein ho? Ladki dekhega? Straight up. I mean, 
And I said, uh, no, you know, I've, I've hardly got any time. I'm here for a few days and there's so many people I have to meet. Uh, there's just no time. Airport to jaoge na? Wahan mil lena. What time is your flight? And I was stunned at my aunt's resourcefulness that she's able to find someone who lived near the airport. But Taiji explained, no, no, she lives in Bangalore. But what is it? We are girls, right? We will call her here around the time of your flight. I'm not kidding. This actually happened. And I was so horrified that, of course, I flat out said no. But, but I realized the, you know, more importantly or more often rather, it was more important to be a little more subtle about the whole thing. You know, to avoid these tricky situations before they got awkward. And so whenever I was in the company of aunts after that, my radar was up. If I was in the US, uh, you know, visiting any of my masis, if I had a get together, they said, uh, Beta, come here, I want you, want you to meet someone. I would immediately find a reason to fix a drink for an uncle of mine. Who, of course, would introduce me to one of his boring friends with a completely different agenda. But at least it was a safe agenda. In India, things were much worse. Because you see, in India, I was not just an unmarried nephew. I was an unmarried NRI banker nephew. <laughs> Among all those currencies in the ledger book, I was a shiny dollar bill. <laughs> and so when I was with my aunts in India, I would always sit very tentatively at the edge of the sofa, you know, ready to jump up and change the topic or go to the kitchen or get a phone call if the conversation even began meandering in a very dangerous direction. It was high alert at all times. Until Vishnu told me that not all aunts are the same. And every situation was slightly different in how to assess the relative difference in the dangers between those situations. Uh, we were drinking together. It was another trip of mine to Bombay. Uh, and uh, Vishnu, also unmarried and also early in his career, was fondly remembered by his aunts in those days. And one of his aunts uh, was visiting Bombay. She was staying at the Marriott in Juhu. And she called Vishnu up and asked him if he'd like to have breakfast with her the next morning on his way to work. And Vishnu was assessing this situation. He said, you know, it could be bad. I mean, she might have names of girls she wants me to meet. It could be even worse if she has photographs. But the worst thing will be if she has phone numbers and she pushes me to call them. On the other hand, he said, it's a free buffet breakfast at the Marriott. <laughs> And that's when he gave me his great theory of relative relativity. <laughs> he said, not all aunts are as dangerous. See, take this one. Let's see, she's a chachi. She's my father's youngest brother's wife. So she thinks of herself as almost our generation. So she'll try and act cool about the whole thing. She won't raise the topic right away. So I could definitely get through the fresh fruit and the cold cuts before the topic comes up. And then she's a chachi. You know, she's not a direct blood relative. Unlike buas or masis. You know, there's not as much skin in the game. So, when the topic comes up, if I joke about it, she'll feel compelled to laugh. Rather than get serious and tell me that, you know, I should be serious too. So, I think that I could get the eggs done, maybe even the waffles. Now, the trick is whether I can get it past dessert before it gets tricky. And the next day when I called Vishnu up, he had the he sounded like Houdini after you know an escape act. He said, "I had to concoct a work call to rush out of there at some point, but I got through three full courses." <laughs> Man, the Spanish omelette at the Marriott is just outstanding. <laughs> so there you had it. Chachis were safer, especially much younger ones. Now this theory of Vishnu got tested for me the following year when I was visiting India again. This time I was in Delhi for a friend's wedding. When I got a call from my aunt, my mother's younger cousin's wife, my mommy. Now my mommy's daughter, uh, Aditi, lived in New York and she was where I lived at the time. And she was very fond of me and part of her ways of showing how, you know, how, how, how much she was fond of me was she would always talk about setting me up with some of her friends. And each of these friends, whenever she talked about them, was just perfect for me. Uh, of course, these conversations were easy and fun and easy to indulge because 
there was no practical consequence to them. None of these friends of hers lived in New York, or for that matter, on the continent of North America. <laughs> but it's one thing to have that kind of a chat with my cousin. It's quite another when her mother suddenly raises it. And the conversation with my mommy had been relaxed and entertaining and fun when she suddenly slipped it in. And she said, you know, Aditi's been saying how you and Priya would really get along wonderfully. And look at it now, you're visiting Delhi and she works in Europe, but she's also visiting Delhi and, and I really think you should meet her. <laughs> now, when it's pitched that way, what did it really mean? I mean, was my aunt actually setting me up on a date? I, I know she's a mommy and she's a cousin mommy and a younger cousin mommy and she might think of herself as you know, being close enough to her daughter and share everything and, you know, treat her daughter like a younger sister or a friend like some mothers like to do. But was she really cool enough to set me up on a date like cousins do? And so I said, if she's being cool about it, I'll also be cool about it. And I said, listen, I really don't want to meet anybody for marriage. And, and besides, what's the point of meeting someone who lives on another continent? And my aunt completely understood and she said, I totally get it. How can you think about marriage when you haven't met someone? Uh, and it's just that, you know, Aditi has gone on and on about how you and Priya would get along great and I know Priya, she's a lovely girl and ideally Aditi should have been here to make the introduction but she's not and I thought that shouldn't be a reason for me calling you, right? Of course not, I said. <laughs> but now I was well entrenched into this conversation and, and how to get out and therefore I did what I do best which is to avoid confrontation and take that middle path. <laughs> So I said, uh, you know, I don't really mind meeting her, but there's no time. You know, I'm here for a wedding, there's a function tonight, there's a lunch tomorrow, I have to be there. And then I'm catching a flight after that and with Delhi traffic being what it is, there's really no time in between. And my mommy said, uh, what time is your flight? <laughs> because her house is on the way to the airport, so you're going to always have coffee somewhere along the way. This road to the airport. I realized it was a very dangerous one. <laughs> and having had my excuse so quickly thwarted and not being able to think of another one on the spot, I said, okay. Um, and so my mommy said, okay, here's, take this number down. Why don't you call and fix it up? And I said, great. Uh, this is Priya's number. And my mommy said, no, no, this is her aunt's number. <laughs> That's how I know Priya. Lovely girl. And she put the phone down. Now, there should not be two aunts. <laughs> One aunt I can explain. Two. And I was just about thinking of some new excuse to come up with an extra function at the wedding, a change in my flight time, too earlier, uh, when the phone rang and it was Priya's aunt. And she said, I was on the phone with her. I mean, and she said, uh, Beta, here's the address. I believe you'll pick her up at 4.30. Lovely. <laughs> Now, I think I could have still pulled out at that time technically, but having, you know, to say no after already having said yes is just that much harder. And especially when talking to somebody else's aunt. <clears throat> there were times, I told myself, when it's easier to just grit your teeth and go through with something that you said yes to than to reopen the whole discussion all over again. And how bad could this be? I mean, uh, a quick coffee with a girl who by two eyewitness accounts was lovely uh, on my way to the airport to catch a flight to leave the country. <laughs> and so at 4.30 the next day, I uh, rang the doorbell of her house, uh, trying to be open-minded and optimistic about this date. The door was answered by her father. Behind him was her mother. <laughs> Behind her was an uncle who happened to be passing by, her brother, another uncle, and they were all very well dressed, like they had come from a wedding. I was escorted into a living room where there was a plethora of many things to eat laid out. There was everything that I hadn't expected to see, just that there was no Priya. And after some time when I inquired, uh, her mother said she's getting ready. And so for the next 20 odd minutes, which seemed like a really, really long time, 
I answer questions posed by her family, my work, number of siblings, last night's cricket match, <laughs> hobbies, the world economy. They were all very sweet. Anything I said was met with a smile and an approval. Sometimes they would look at me, look at one another and smile. <laughs> If any of them said, try the badam or the matti, two others would jump up and serve it to me. By that point, when Priya appeared, if she had come out under a bhungar carrying a tray of chai, I would have been prepared for it. I, I was ready for anything at that point. But this mantra I had told myself that, you know, just bear it, go through with it, how bad can it be, was not working so well. And so when Priya did appear, Fortunately, without Bhungat and tray of chai. Very shortly after that, I asked her, I said, do you want to step out for coffee? To which she very readily agreed. And later, when I was chatting with her, I discovered that it was far more awkward for her than it was for me. I mean, after all, I was with a group of strangers that I might never see again. And the rest of that coffee date, if I can still call it that, was surprisingly nice. We got along really well and, uh, you know, partially aided by laughing at the awkwardness of the situation at her place. And I couldn't help thinking that had we met under different circumstances, it might have been a genuinely pleasant encounter. Not that it might have gone anywhere, but we would have kept in touch or been friends had there not been this awkward baggage surrounding the situation. And if there was any doubt in my mind that there was baggage around the situation, it was clarified a week later when my mommy called me up in New York. So, what did you think? I mean, we don't mind, but you know, her family must be getting nervous, so we have to give them some answer. Vishnu was wrong. All aunts are the same. Some may look different from the others, but at the end of the day, none of them can be trusted. There is a happy and strange twist to the story. About a year and a half later, I quit my job, moved back to India and became an actor a mostly unemployed actor. <laughs> Suddenly from that shiny dollar bill on my aunt's ledger books, I became a rusted 25 by some <laughs> I was unmanageable. So I no longer sat nervously around my aunt's when the topic of marriage came up. I would relax, sink into the sofa and watch them get nervous. Nervous out of a sense of shame that they could not fulfill their responsibilities to get me married. In fact, one of my aunts said, when I confidently one day waded into the topic of marriage, she said, Oh, so you're open to getting married? Ah, so when are you getting a job? For all of you who are single and are being troubled by your aunts about it, take my advice, quit your job today and become an actor. It's much better than you think. Thank you.